gardening is a popular pastime for many of us. And some people even set out to attract wildlife to their gardens. One local man has done just that, and in doing so, has made one of the most exciting scientific discoveries since Shropshire's very own Charles Darwin. This beautiful garden is Ted and Di Barbers. They're nature enthusiasts and have built this superb lake in their grounds. However, all is not well with their pond. Well, we started losing carp, the koi carp at first, and uh, I didn't know if it was a mink or an otter, um, but gradually decided it was an otter and we started losing more and more until recently, and when the snow was on the ground, we were losing um, eight or ten a week and I got a stealth cam uh, to put out overnight and started to get um, results particularly during the snow where you could see it had come into the garden and um, actually proved that it was an otter. The, the otter had caught two carp, um, bitten them under the throat to immobilize them and then carried them out of the pond down into a brook at the back and had them facing upstream, stashed away as it were, for another night. The footage that Ted captured is truly remarkable. An otter caching its catch, in other words, storing it for later. That's never been filmed before, but even more extraordinary is that it looks like the fish were kept alive. I took the film to Dr Gareth Parry, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature's Otter Specialist at Shire Hall in Shrewsbury. There's an otter here which seems to be storing those fish. It, now, is that typical behaviour? It is typical behaviour of the mustard lid family, which is our main family of carnivores in the UK. So we're looking at stoats, polecat, weasels. It's not actually been recorded in otters before, so that is quite interesting. It was always assumed they didn't actually cache because they didn't like to eat food that wasn't fresh. It's very common in the other mustard lid species. So this is the first time I've actually seen any evidence of an otter caching food, which it, this clearly is, so that's very interesting. The question would be though is, is it trying to keep the prey alive or not? If the otter was trying to keep the fish alive by purposely keeping it in water um, and thinking that this would keep it fresh, so better food for later consumption, that would be very significant. We can't tell conclusively from this whether that's the case. It might just be that the otter stored it in water because that's where otters live most of the time and it's likely to re-encounter it there. But if we could find more evidence and but follow this up with a bit of research to find if the otter was intentionally trying to keep the prey alive, that would be very significant because in the whole family of carnivores around the world, there's no recorded evidence of any species trying to keep a, a cache of live prey. What's needed now is more research. And a case like this just goes to show that in the natural world, enthusiasts, amateur and professional alike, all have a role to play in adding to our scientific knowledge on a local and global level. I think it's rather fitting that just a few miles from the birthplace of Charles Darwin, who famously mused about his theory of evolution whilst wandering through his own back garden, Ted is keeping the Salopian tradition alive and fresh, so to speak.